This is 2020's It Cuts Deep. Warning, spoilers ahead. We open up on a lone house as a boy walks up to it, and a girl opens the door to welcome him. She tells him that he's late, but he walks right up to her and starts kissing her. The girl asks if he'd like to come inside to study, but he doesn't take the hint. After she spells it out for him, he eagerly accepts her offer. Just as they go to get it on, a man barges in with a knife and puts an end to study time. Then we cut to Sam who's sitting at a campground park bench, and actually shows up with Tupperwares of food. Sam tells her that the food looks delicious and he's a better man than I am. What is that, fishtail soaked in oil? Honestly, I feel like that's a delicacy somewhere in the world, but Sam and I are obviously on the same page when it comes to oily fishtails. At least he's being nice about it though. Ashley asks him how far they are from their destination, and he tells her that it's only about an hour or so. Ashley decides that this is a good time to try and talk about their future together, since everyone keeps bugging them about getting married. But Sam tries to cover it up with a joke instead. Ashley doesn't find it funny though and she tries to get Sam back to the point of getting married and having kids. Sam starts choking on a fishtail, and he heads to the bathroom where a demonic child is screaming bloody murder to the heavens. The child's father asks Sam what he's looking at, and he assumes that he's trying to take the kids to the bathroom. Then the man starts to think that Sam is questioning his parenting skills, and he carries his screaming child away from the bathroom. That child was never seen again. Just kidding, I don't know what happened to the screamer, but that's definitely the kind of kid that would have that headline. Ashley and Sam keep going down the road, and they eventually come to Sam's childhood home. The first thing that Ashley realizes is the fact that this area is a dead zone, and Sam reminds her that this is a vacation and part of the deal. After Sam makes a crass joke, he hears something come from the garage door opening, but he shrugs it off and goes to get the bags out of the car. Okay, one, why is the garage door cracked open if no one lives there? That's an intruder alert if I ever saw one. Two, why is Ashley with Sam if she can't stand his stupid jokes or personality? Just leave. Ashley leaves Sam standing in the driveway, and Sam doesn't stop the comedy. When she gets inside, she finds the Christmas tree is up and lit, and she starts taking deep breaths. Meanwhile, Sam goes to investigate the open garage, and he finds that the back door to the garage is open too. Just when he goes to walk inside, he hears a baby crying from the shadows, and he freaks out when Ashley surprises him by opening the garage door all the way. Now Sam can see that there's nothing aside from a creepy Santa doll, and he tells Ashley to go freshen up while he gets dinner ready for them. While Ashley is in the shower, she starts practicing a very important conversation she has to have with Sam, but she can't seem to find the right words. By dinner she still hasn't perfected it, but her conversation is going better than the crispy steak that Sam made. These two cannot be together long term. I'm not saying someone has to cook at all times, but at least one person has to be able to cook something edible if they need to survive. They couldn't survive off their oily fishtails and charcoal crunch steak. After Sam chokes on his own steak, Sam ends up in a stance that makes Ashley think he's proposing to her, but he makes sure that she doesn't keep thinking that. Ashley thinks that he can still ask if he wants to, but when she asks if he's ever going to, she walks away when he doesn't answer. That night Ashley tosses in her sleep, and Sam asks her if she's mad when he lays down. After a little back and forth, Sam manages to get a smile out of Ashley, and he promises to make it up to her. Ashley feels better when he says that they can have a serious conversation about the future when they wake up. After they fall asleep, Sam wakes up and finds that Ashley is gone, and when he goes downstairs, he finds the front door cracked open. She pops up behind him to see what he's doing, and she tells him that she's going back to sleep. In the morning, Ashley goes for a jog, and she passes by Nolan and some guys who are working on the side of the road. Back at home, Sam flips through the photo album he had, and we see some baby pictures of him. He freaks out when Ashley sneaks up behind him, and he asks her why she didn't ask him to jog with her. She knows that he wouldn't go jogging, but he points out that it's nice to be invited though. The two of them go out for breakfast, and when Ashley starts to talk about their future, Sam starts hiding from Nolan who just walked in. Nolan notices him though, and he comes over to sit with them. Nolan tells Ashley that they used to be best friends who worked together. We get our first red flag when Nolan's co-worker comes over to tell him that they've gotta go and he immediately cracks and screams at him. Let's make sure not to run into him again. After Nolan leaves, Sam gets flashes of the kids we saw in the beginning, and Ashley finds it weird that he never mentioned having a best friend. Later Sam has an internal crisis when he goes to look at a little baby Jesus in the nativity, and he has the same problem at the store when he looks at rings. What makes it worse is the fact that they run into Nolan with his daughter. Suddenly Nolan's wife Lauren pops up, and she reminds Nolan that they have plans that evening. Sam and Ashley say their goodbyes and they head home. Sam thinks that Nolan is following them, but Ashley only remembers the cute baby. Later that same day, Nolan pops up at their door and tells them that his plans changed for the evening. Ashley invites him to dinner, and Sam couldn't be less pleased about it. I can't blame him. This is where everyone's at fault. Nolan's a creep. 
Sam should open up about his past trauma, and actually should be able to pick up the hint that Sam is uncomfortable. And for best friends, that's a lot of tension between Nolan and Sam. At dinner, Nolan brings up the fact that Sam and Ashley should get married, and after things get really awkward, Nolan suggests starting a fire. While they gather around the fire, Ashley asks why it's been 10 years since they've seen each other, and Nolan enlightens her about their past. 10 years ago, he takes us back to the kids we saw at the beginning, and we find out that this girl was actually Nolan's sister. When Nolan starts crying, Ashley comes down to hold him, and Nolan winks at Sam. Sam thinks that this should be the end of the night, but Nolan says that he has a surprise in his truck for them. When they go out to see what the surprise is, they find Nolan dressed as Santa on a rocking chair on the porch. Nolan gets really weird here. He grabs Ashley to sit on his lap, and he says that he knows how to deal with unruly kids like her. Hey, hey, that's for them to do in their bedroom on their own time. Take your creepy drunk Santa in a Jeepers Creeper rocking chair back to your own house, man. Ashley rushes inside, and Nolan tells Sam that he's going to steal her right from under his nose. Then Sam slams the door in Nolan's face, and he ends up hitting him in his nose. Nolan tells him that he got in a fight with Lauren, and he thought that they were friends. Sam points out that they were friends, but he's been ignoring him for 10 years for a reason. Inside, Ashley can't believe that Sam thinks Nolan is trying to take her from him, and she walks upstairs after telling him that she loves him. Yeah. Then later that night, Sam sleeps with the creepy Santa gnome. Burn that thing! He's woken up from his slumber by a loud thud, and he gets up to go check it out. He checks on Ashley in the bedroom, but once he sees that she's sleeping, he checks the front porch. He goes to the garage to get a screwdriver, and Ashley wakes up to check on Sam. While Sam walks around the street looking for Nolan, he calls for him to show himself. Sure enough, Nolan walks out of the woods holding a crying bundle. But when Ashley gets to Sam, Nolan is gone. Ashley thinks he's crazy and goes back inside, and Sam screams a warning to Nolan before he goes back inside too. In the morning, Sam makes breakfast, and he serves Ashley at the table. After Sam joins her, she asks him why is he acting so weird, and he tells her that he's ready to talk about marriage. Ashley isn't too enthusiastic about having this conversation anymore, and I can't really blame her. Plus, his cooking made her throw up, so I don't really see that helping his situation any. While Ashley is in the bathroom, she checks her phone, but she forgot that this is a dead zone. Meanwhile, Sam goes outside, and he decides to chop some wood. At least he tries to. Back inside, Ashley uses the house phone to leave a message for her mom, and she goes for a jog afterwards. Sam comes back inside and flips through some more old photo albums, but something is haunting him. As Ashley runs by Nolan's worksite, she spots him, and she stops to say hi. Back at home, Sam plays the messages on the answering machine, and he listens to one of his mother asking when he's going to marry Ashley. He goes outside and chucks his keys into the yard before grabbing a bike and riding into town. What's going on? Those are expensive keys. You can't just go to Walmart and get a copy of those things. If you want to feel like a kid again, find a cheaper way to do it at least. While Sam is in town, he runs into Laura, and he asks her if everything is okay with her and Nolan. After he finds out that they actually didn't have a fight, he heads home to find Nolan helping Ashley with the Christmas tree. She tells Sam that Nolan came over to apologize for the night before, and Sam shakes his hand. While he goes outside to get wood, he has a vision of the two of them getting it on, and he comes inside to see if they had a good time while he was away. Ashley and Nolan are really confused on what's going on here, and Sam opens up about how Nolan used to be way more of a jerk when they were younger. After Nolan gets in Sam's face, he tells Ashley that he needs to talk to her outside. Once they're outside, Sam reaches into his pocket, and Ashley thinks that he's proposing to her. This would be the time that someone would try and propose. This would be the absolute crap timing that someone would pick to lock her down. But Sam definitely doesn't feel like that type though. In fact, I don't think he'd even propose if someone held a gun to him. Sam isn't having it. Ashley tells him that she would absolutely not marry him after this weekend, and she goes inside to cook dinner. While Sam stands outside, we get an extra glimpse of the girl from the beginning as she tells someone that she has something to say. He also has a fantasy about Ashley running into Nolan inside, but that's not what happened. While he stands in the yard, Nolan comes out to apologize to him again, and he tells him that he was upset about what happened when his sister died. He hates that Sam stopped talking to him after she died, and Sam points out that Nolan ruined his life back then. Sam warns Nolan to stay away from Ashley, but he doesn't think that Ashley will be okay with that. Sam thinks that Nolan knows more than he's letting on, and he pulls a machete out. Well, now I'm starting to think that Sam's the one we saw in the beginning. But wait! Nolan charges Sam, and now there's no more Nolan. Even Sam's surprised by what just happened. Inside, Ashley flips through Sam's photo album and he creeps inside. He heads to the kitchen and turns the water on to wash the blood from his hands, and Ashley comes in to talk to him. She asks if he's okay, and Sam just tells her that it was a mistake. He tells her that he really wishes they could have a future together, but he messed up. Then, Ashley reveals her big secret. She's pregnant. 
Twist of the century, ladies and gentlemen. After hearing the news, Sam points out that he doesn't want to be a father and he starts yelling. When he turns around, Ashley asks him what happened. Sam takes her back to the day 10 years ago and he reveals that he was the one that killed Nolan's sister. Nolan's sister was also pregnant with Sam's baby and Ashley immediately runs outside to find Nolan on the ground. Sam keeps telling Ashley that he can hear the sister's unborn baby all weekend and he creeps closer to her. Ashley rushes inside and locks Sam outside while she calls the police. At least she tries to. But she finds out that the cord has been cut. She goes to leave through the side door, but when Sam goes to stop her, she rushes out the front door to get the machete out of Nolan. When Sam gets to the front, he searches for Ashley, but she makes a break for Nolan's truck. Ashley's next level victim survival here. This is a good rendition of what it feels like to play Dead by Daylight sometimes. Ashley can't find the keys, and Sam takes this time to open up seriously to her. He explains that he never wanted to have a baby, and he never saw this in his future. Ashley decides to tell him that the only reason she ever wanted to marry him was because she found out that she was pregnant. She tells him that he'd be a terrible father, and Sam takes a few steps back from the truck. Ashley stays in the truck for the rest of the day and into the night, and she's surprised when Nolan smacks the car door. Ashley grabs the machete, but when she turns around, Nolan is gone again. She sees the truck keys on the ground though, and she risks opening the door to get them. Suddenly, she's tackled by Sam who stabs her ankle. That's like the worst spot to get stabbed. Now she's even hobbling like a wounded survivor from Dead by Daylight. Sam catches up to her and he takes the machete. He goes to finish her off, but when Ashley says that she'll get rid of the baby, he drops the weapon. The two of them hold each other, but he forgot that she still has the screwdriver. She stabs him with it, and he drops to his knees. Sam pulls out the ring from his pocket, and after he asks her to marry him, she finishes him off. In the morning, Ashley hobbles down the road. Then, the credits roll. Ah, the classic good guy is really the bad guy twist kind of movie. I still want to know whether Nolan was really a bad guy or if that was all in Sam's head. Otherwise, it was a solid movie. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.